Alright guys, before I start the video, I'd like to thank everyone who subscribed and liked the videos. I really appreciate all the positive feedback I've been getting, it means a lot to me. The only negative thing I've read so far is my accent. I guess some people have never heard a Mexican talk. I'll try to work on talking a little more clear, but I'm glad you guys like the content. And I apologize if this video offends anyone, that was not my intention. I'm just trying to get all the information I can and provide it to you. So without further ado, let's get this video started. Dylan Storm Roof was born April 3rd, 1994 in Columbia, South Carolina to parents Frank Bennett Roof, who was a carpenter, and Amelia Cowles, who was a bartender. His parents divorced right after Dylan was born. He has two sisters, an older half-sister named Amber and a younger sister named Morgan Roof. His father remarried when Dylan was just five years old to a lady named Paige Mann, who Bennett was allegedly, verbally, and physically abusive to. They ended up divorcing in 2009. Roof was known as a quiet kid who had compulsive behaviors growing up. He was obsessed over germs. He also had to have his haircut a certain style, pretty much the same haircut he had in his entire life. He played video games, interacted with family, and also attended church and Bible camp. Once he was in middle school, he started smoking pot and got caught buying marijuana. In nine years, Dylan attended seven different schools, in which he repeated the ninth grade twice. In 2010, he stopped attending school and dropped out and just played video games and started doing drugs such as Suboxone which is a prescription drug for people trying to get off of heroin and who are addicted to painkillers. Once he dropped out of high school, he began living with a friend by the name of Joey Meek, who he would party with and do drugs. He even had an African-American best friend by the name of Christian Scriven. Was Dylan ignorant? Was he racist? No. Like, everybody's making him out to be racist, but here I am in front of you today as a black man and telling you I look at him no different today than what I looked at him last week because he never never said anything racist to me, never treated me any different than he treated Justin. Dylan Roof didn't really have any racial issues until February 26, 2012, when the Tavon Martin incident had happened. That's when he began looking into racial differences. In 2015, when the Baltimore protests had happened, Dylan was upset and started making more comments about how blacks were taking over the world. That's when Dylan really started plotting out a plan on starting a racial war. At first, he was planning to shoot up the College of Charleston, once Dylan started really plotting a plan on how he was going to shoot up the school, that's when he began scoping it out and realized there was too many security guards. After that, he began to look for a new place to shoot up. Dylan was a regular on Nazi websites and went by the name of Aryan Blood 1488, mainly posting on the white supremacy site called the Daily Stormer. In February 28, 2015, employees at the Columbia shopping mall called the police when they saw Roof dressed in black and asking suspicious questions about when the store closed when they left for the night, according to court records, he was questioned on March 2nd about the incident that happened at the Columbia shopping mall. During the questioning, authorities found a bottle of Suboxidone. He was arrested on misdemeanor charge of possession and was banned from the mall for a year. On April 3rd, 2015, his father gave him $400 for his birthday to buy a gun. Before that, he would always carry around his grandfather's gun. And just a couple days later, he was arrested yet again for trespassing at that same mall he was banned from. The ban was extended an additional three years. A week prior to the shooting, his friend Joseph Meek said he began to act different. He began talking about shooting up black people and starting a racial war. Joseph Meek didn't really take him serious, but hid his gun anyway when he was drunk and gave it to him the next day because he didn't want to get in trouble for stealing a gun. He would drink heavily, mainly vodka and take suboxidone. On the evening of June 17, 2015, Dylan drove to Emmanuel African Methodist Church. Once he arrived at the church, he went inside 
they were about to start routine Bible study. But even though it was an African American church, they welcomed him with open arms and handed him a Bible. As he sat down with 12 other people to participate in the Bible studies, Dylan was even debating if he should even go through with it because they were so nice to him. Once they bowed their heads in prayer, Dylan stood up and pulled the gun from his fanny pack, aiming it at an 87 year old woman named Susie Jackson. Jackson's nephew, 26 year old Taiwanza Saunders, tried to talk him down and asked him, why are you attacking the churchgoers? Dylan responded, I have to do this. You're raping our women and you're taking over our country and you have to go. And he expressed his intention to shoot everyone. Saunders drove in front of Ms. Jackson and he was the first one shot. Dylan began shooting at everyone and yelling racial slurs. One of the things he was yelling out, you want something to pray about? I'll give you something to pray about. He reloaded five times. Twanza's mother and his five-year-old niece survived as they pretended to play dead. He ended up realizing Saunders' mother wasn't dead and asked her, did I shoot you? She responded, no. And he said, good, because I need one survivor because I'm about to shoot myself and you'll be the only survivor. According to the son of Miss Saunders, he put the gun to his head and pulled the trigger but discovered he was out of ammunition. Before leaving the church, Dylan said over the people's body, a racial slur that I really don't feel comfortable repeating. The shooting lasted six minutes. He ended up killing six women and three men. Eight died at the scene and the ninth, Daniel Simmons, died at the hospital. Once he left the church, several hours later, a bomb threat was called into the courtyard of Marriott Hotel. Dylan's father and uncle saw the security photos on the news and called the authorities to name Dylan as a shooting suspect. The next day, a woman recognized Dylan at a gas station and called her boss to tell him she had recognized Dylan Roof. Once she did, he called authorities. She began to follow him for 35 miles before authorities arrived to arrest him. Once the cops arrested him, he stated he was hungry and the cops took him to Burger King to get a Whopper. You know, this is one of the things that I was really debating on putting into the story just because I needed foolproof facts that he actually went to Burger King and in the interrogation video well um, and but before we do I'll do that after we're done that's fine I just uh you had a sandwich you were eating in here when we came in here right so they fed you was that a Big Mac you done? uh no it was a Whopper Whopper it's Burger King it's water you've been allowed to go to the restroom well, I haven't been yet. Do you need to go? Sort of. Okay, well, I do too. We'll get you over there in just a minute. All right. Um, do you, I mean, they, they, it looks like the Shelby PD guys have been treating you really nice. Mm -hmm. I mean, they've been really, really great. They've treated us really nice too. They actually gave me some food too. I, I mean, so, I'm right. hungry. On July 31st, 2015, Dylan pleaded not guilty to the charges against him at the behest of his lawyer, David Brooke. Roof originally wanted to plead guilty, but Brooke stated he was not willing to advise him to plead guilty until the government indicated whether or not they were going to seek the death penalty. On February 24, 2016, the Justice Department announced they would seek the death penalty over Roof's crimes. During his trial, one of the things that created a lot of controversy is his older sister had created a GoFundMe account to raise money because she claimed she had to cancel her wedding due to the trial. She was planning on donating 10% of the earnings to the victim's family which would have been $500 because she was trying to raise $5,000. And once GoFundMe got word of what she was trying to do, he ended up canceling it. On August 4th, 2016, Roof was beaten by a fellow inmate in Charleston County Detention Center. The inmate was 25 year old Dwayne Marion Stafford who was awaiting trial on assault charges and robbery. Roof was in protective custody at the time of the attack. The two detention officers had left him alone. One was on break, the other one was called on for a task. He ended up suffering bruising to the face and body. The night after the attack, Stafford was released on bond, over $100,000. Apparently people got word of the assault and they began donating money to get Dwayne Stafford out of jail. Dylan Roof's attorney stated that they didn't plan to press charges. Dylan's attorney tried to say he had social anxiety disorder, possibly autism and depression, but Dylan himself quickly blocked those claims out and noted that he'd rather be known as a psychopath rather than autistic. During his hearing, his mother suffered a heart attack. On January 10th, 2017, during the sentencing, he showed no remorse. As he acted as his own lawyer, he said, I felt like I had to do it. I still feel like I have to do it. 
Judge Jurgel sentenced Ruth to death by lethal injection. Alright guys, if you liked the video, go ahead and give it a big thumbs up. If you're new to the channel and you like the content, go ahead and subscribe. And if you have anybody else you'd like me to do next, go ahead and comment down below. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.